Carol Burnett and Company, starring Carol Burnett. marker is just filthy. Mama, I hope you don't intend on polishing every single letter on that thing. Remember now, we only got a few minutes, huh? Well, if I don't do it, who will? Lord knows you never did nothing for your daddy. No, I like Carl's marker better than the other markers around here. Don't you, Eunice? Yes, Mama. That marble one that Luigi fella's got there is just plain gaudy. <laughs> and why in the world this Rose Chang's family ever put all of them birds on there? I'll never know. I'll, I'll never know either, Mama. What the hell kind of a name is that, anyway? Rose Chang. <laughs> Mama, I don't know. Well, your father wasn't a flashy man. He would have appreciated this simple little marker. I know all you kids think I got it because it was cheap. <laughs> oh, Mama, nobody thought you was cheap Not that I had much money Your father never was one to plan ahead And he died so suddenly left me with nothing I know, Mama Not planning ahead, that was his downfall You inherited that trait from him, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I was arguing with him right before he died Mama, please, now don't go through all that again. Oh, Carl, I didn't mean it when I said you were a no-good, weak, panty waist with no backbone. Mama. <laughs> Those were my last words to him, Eunice. I know. <laughs> and he stormed off to the bathroom and he died there. <laughs> no, Mama, please don't. I can still see him sitting there. <laughs> You just spare me all the details. Oh, I I'm know. I am boring. Times. I am boring. Every time I talk about anything that is close to my heart, I am boring. Would it be asking too much for you to go fill this vase up with water? Would you rather I hobbled up the hill and did it myself? I'll be happy to do it. Just will you hurry up with your visit so we can go? <laughs> well, Carl, I hope you're happy wherever you are. And I hope you realize how bad things are for me. I'm living with Eunice now, and you see how she is. I can't even open my mouth without getting jumped on. <laughs> you remember that god-awful creep she married? Well, he finally run off, and I told her the day they got married, if they had any children, they was gonna turn out to be freaks, and sure as shooting, that's what they've turned out to be. <laughs> Them two boys are gonna wind up in reform school yet. Here we are, Mama. Nice fresh <laughs> daisies for Daddy. <laughs> Well, they sure look puny compared to this bunch Rose Chang's got. Well, maybe Rose Chang's family's rich. If they were rich, she wouldn't be on this end of the cemetery. You do not have to be rich to buy decent flowers. Now, look, Mama. You were standing there right next to me when I bought these daisies. If you had wanted red roses or pink chrysanthemums, why didn't you say so? <laughs> when you asked the lady what she had for a buck, I was so mortified I could hardly speak. <laughs> well, I did not see you opening up your pocketbook. You see what I was talking about, Carl? You want me to... <laughs> you want me to go back to that flower shop and get more she flowers? Is that what I'll just leave them here. They'll all be dead by tomorrow anyway. <laughs> You know, I think Carl likes being here on this dip slope. It's good drainage. <laughs> He's got this nice view of the Raytown Medical Dental Center. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want an elaborate funeral, Eunice. 
Oh, Mama, don't. Now, you just don't. slip me in quietly here between Daddy and Rose Chang. <laughs> Sets me when you talk like that. That's a long way off, Mama. Come on now. I had a real nice day planned for both of us. Come on, let's go to the movie. A nice day for you, maybe. It's always some movie you want to see. Now, don't you want to say a little something to your father in private? No. No, no. I, I, I've been talking to him in my head. Well, I hope you've been saying a prayer. I don't know what kind of prayers you say these days. Wouldn't ever hurt you to show up at church once in a while. All right, Mama, we'll talk about that some other time, too. Come on. Well, at least say a little prayer out loud so he won't know how much you've slept. Mama, I told you I've been saying a prayer to him in my head, and I know he heard it. Well, say a little something out loud. You hardly ever come out here. Say anything. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. Oh, I'm fine. How's things down there with you? The boys are fine, and they send their love. Let's go. That's it? Well, what else do you want? Well, tell him something to cheer him up, Eunice. I know. Recite that little Indian poem he used to love so much. What? You know that little Indian poem you used to do? Hi, Waffle Kid. <laughs> Remember when he was little, how much they used to cheer him up? It didn't cheer him up. He hated it. He always used to say, how long is this thing anyway? Well, fine. <laughs> you should think he could show a little human compassion. The poor man's lying out here alone year after year. All right, all right. <laughs> when you was 10. Well, it ain't exactly something I brush up on every day. Now, can we please go to the moon? Oh, well, fine, Carl. We can't talk any longer because your daughter's got to rush off to some silly movie. Now, wait just a minute. I wanted to go to this movie alone, but you kept moaning and groaning and whining about sitting at home staring at them four walls, so I said, okay, okay, Mama. I'll treat you to lunch and I'll treat you to the movie. And then what do you do? You proceed to drag me out here to this creepy cemetery where you make a total... <laughs> Jackass out of your soul! <laughs> and this movie is important to me. It happens to be a Barbra Streisand musical. Oh, well, she won't take me anywhere I want to go. So when I find do get out is to sit through two hours of that silly Barbara Streisand and who the hell ever told her she could sing anyway? <laughs> well, I am aghast at your ignorance. Barbara Streisand only happens to be the number one box office star in the whole world, that's all. Get off your daddy. <laughs> all you care about. Well, I deserve to have some fun in my life. And this is the selfishness that I'm forced to live with. And she was always that way, Carl. Shut you up! That... I have had it up to here with you, old woman. <laughs> Not once in your entire life did either one of you ever give me one kind word. I remember the time when I was little and I fell out of that tree at the reservoir and I broke my arm. And the wind was not clean out of me, and there I was writhing in pain, and you and Daddy come rushing up to me, and you looked down at me, and you said, well, damn it, there goes our vacation. <laughs> <laughs> and you, all I ever got from you was, Eunice, keep out of my life. Eunice, don't breathe in my face. Eunice, keep your voice down. Well, I am through keeping my voice down. I am through keeping out of your way and keeping my voice down. Do you hear me, Daddy? Oh, Carl, I wish I was down there alongside you. So do I. She can still see him sitting 
there. <laughs> and then she pulls this number about wanting to slip in there between him and this bird woman. <laughs> I hate it out here. I hate it. This place gives me the willies. <laughs> You listen to me, and you listen to me good, you old toad. <laughs> you can either come with me right now, or you can camp out right here, because I don't care. Well, you just go on ahead then, because I am staying right here. Fine. Well, you don't have to fly off the handle. Just wait a minute. <laughs> Carl, we'll be back again real soon and we'll have another nice visit. <laughs> Your Aunt May's around here somewhere. I don't guess you'd like to stop and see her for a minute. I don't want to see Aunt May. I want to see Barbara Streisand. Oh, well, if I live to be a hundred, I will never figure out what's so special about her.